Oh, we're ready to go. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, we please start with a roll call. Council President McIrvin? Here. Council Member O'Halloran? Here. Council Member Rivera? Here. Council Member Albertson? Here. Member Vaughn? Here. Council Member Perez? Here. Uh, Council Member Prince? Roll call, Mr. Mayor, one absent. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Council President McIrvin. Move we excuse the absent Council Member. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Perez, that we excuse the council member, excuse the uh, absent council member. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And tonight we're going to start off with a couple of uh, proclamations. And the first one is Valley Medical Center's 75th anniversary celebration. Hey, whereas uh, proclamation, whereas Valley Medical Center is the first, oldest, and largest public hospital district in Washington State, established in 1947, and whereas for 75 years, Valley Medical Center has served the South King County community and made significant contributions to improve health and wellness, prevent and treat disease, bring new life into the world, and provide comfort as patients and families say their final goodbyes, and whereas Valley Medical Center is a comprehensive 341-bed acute care hospital with a clinic network of over 50 primary, urgent, and specialty care uh, clinics throughout C South King County. And whereas Valley Medical Center is one of the largest employers in the hospital district with more than 4,000 dedicated staff members who represent the vibrant diversity of our community. And whereas the people of Valley Medical Center, past and present, have served their patients in this community for 75 years and will continue to do so. Now, therefore, I, Armando Favoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim November 9, 2022 to be Valley Medical Center's 75th Anniversary Celebration Day in the City of Renton. And I encourage all residents to join me in this special observance in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed the 7th day of November, 2022, signed Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Here. Yes, Council President McGurvin. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Perez, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And tonight to accept the proclamation is Liz Noland. I don't see Liz here. Okay, well, we'll make sure that we get... This proclamation to Liz. All right. Next up is uh, National Diabetes Awareness Month. Okay. Proclamation. Whereas the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates 37.3 million adults and children in the U.S. have diabetes and an estimated 96 million adults have prediabetes. And whereas diabetes remains the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S., and whereas newly diagnosed cases of type 1 and type 2 diabetes have significantly increased among U.S. youth, and whereas research shows that people at high risk for diabetes can lower their risk for type 2 diabetes by staying at a healthy weight, eating well, and being active, and whereas uncontrolled diabetes puts people at risk for serious complications, including cardiovascular disease, blindness, kidney disease, and dialysis, and nerve damage and amputation, and whereas learning how to manage this condition through diabetes self-management education is the cornerstone of treatment, and whereas best practice guidelines to treat diabetes include, but are not limited, to insulin, oral medication, diet, physical activity, and daily self-management routines. Now, therefore, I, Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim November 2022 to be National Diabetes Month in the City of Renton, and I encourage all residents to join me in the special observance. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 7th day of November 2022, signed Armando Pavoni, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. President McGurvin. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, second by Council Member Perez, that the proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, motion carries. And tonight to accept this is our own Jason Seth. Make sure I have the right one. Oh. 
And write notes, sorry. <laughs> I always say I'm not used to being on this side of the podium, but it seems to be happening more frequently. So, uh, sure, I just we wanna... only have three minutes, remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank the mayor and council for uh, this proclamation. I appreciate the effort in bringing more awareness uh, to this uh, issue. Uh, my 10 year old daughter, Ruby Annette, was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes while we were on vacation at Disneyland this past uh, August. Uh, she spent three days in the hospital, two days in ICU, uh, while they worked to get her internal chemistry kind of back in order. Uh, she'll now be insulin dependent the rest of her life or until they find a cure. Uh, we don't know exactly what causes type 1 diabetes, but genetics plays a part. Um, it is a daily struggle to make sure glucose levels are, uh, you know, in range. We, I have an app. The technology nowadays is great. I have an app. I can uh, monitor her from anywhere, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, if, if it's going up or down or whatever, we, uh, uh, we had to buy her an Apple Watch and so she could have technology at school so that she can uh, text with us so that she knows when to eat or drink uh, or take, you know, glucose tabs or whatever it is she needs. Uh, so I just want to say thank you for the excellent health care. Uh, the council, you know, adopts uh, our health care package here as an employee with the city of Renton. It's uh, excellent. I mean, my out-of-pocket uh, costs have been, you know, pretty minimal uh, in the last couple of months while we've been dealing with this. Uh, and I want to I want to give a thank you to my wife, Laura, who is basically her full-time caretaker now. And uh, she gets up in the middle of the night, gives her insulin, that kind of thing. And then uh, also to Ellen Bradley Mock's uh, team in HR, because they really helped me kind of navigate the whole, uh, you know, insurance, pharmacies, FMLA, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So they're a pretty amazing team. So thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, next up we have a special presentation, uh, Vision 2050 Award um, presentation by PSRC Governor Smart Ward Community Award presented by uh, Department of Commerce. Thanks. All right, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, um, staff, and members of the community. This evening, we have some very important celebratory business to take care of uh, for the presentation of not one, but two awards. The first is for a Vision 2050 award from the Puget Sound Regional Council for the city's Permit Ready Accessory Dwelling Unit Program, um, or PRODU Program. Uh, through the PRODU program, property owners have access to pre-approved base plans at no cost, technical assistance from staff, uh, expedited re uh, permitting, and reduced administrative fees. As many of you may recall, we publicly announced the PRODU program at a virtual meeting uh, April 2021, and the event was very well attended. We, at one point, had 100 people in attendance. And when we came back to work, signed into our computers that Monday morning, I had 50 emails from people who were interested in the program. So we're very excited, very proud of the program, and interest has just really continued to grow um, from property owners in the city, from other jurisdictions, um, looking to adopt really similar programs. So presenting the city with the Vision 2050 Award is Josh Brown, Executive Director from Puget Sound Regional Council. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Mayor. Nice to see you. Your mayor is one of our active members of the PSRC Executive Board, and I know Council Member Prince is in here, but he chairs uh, PSRC's, or pardon me, serves, he serves as chair of our Growth Management Policy Board. So we have a lot of great leadership from your city that's involved in PSRC. In fact, Chip Vincent and I were on a phone call a little earlier today. Chip's one of our co-chairs for our regional staff committee. So thank you for that wonderful introduction. Our Vision 2050 awards 
are a way for PSRC to recognize just fantastic leadership in, in the Puget Sound region. Our agency is a regional planning agency. We're trying to identify the big things that we need to get right in the region, but we rely on our partners and our membership to be the implementers. And uh, your permit-ready ADU, ADU program is being recognized under, I think it's very appropriate, our planning ahead category for our Vision 2050 award. And of course, as many of us know, we're wrestling with housing affordability in the region. We're trying to find out uh, and discover new ways to bring online more missing middle housing throughout the PSRC region. Uh, this program is, is one very uh, impactful step uh, headed in the right direction. So my hat's off to the city. Thanks for your innovation, your hard work. Congratulations. And I know it's your hardworking staff that helped to make this all come together at the end of the day. So congratulations to them for their incredible work. It's yeah. Okay. I'm gonna see them. Yes. No. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Sorry, you're practicing early. Yeah. He's gone. Sorry. Now we know. You know, like trial and error. May you may you shoot shoot by the CBA staff. Yeah, can we? CD. CD and the commissioners. CD. Yes. Cool. If everyone in CD. Yeah, Chief. There's a lot of staff here. Staff yeah. of the planning board. Yeah. 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 Okay. But Our planning, planning commissioners. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please join us. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yeah, come on. Yeah, we need to balance. That's what I was saying. Yeah, we need to shift it. Wait, I'm moving. Is it you, Ryan? Where are you? Where can we stop? Everybody can go this way. You guys need a stool. That's a delta. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and the second Seconds. award is a Governor Smart Communities Award from the Department of Commerce for the city's Rainier Grady Junction TOD sub area plan, which council adopted last November, I think November 22nd. Um, the plan provides a vision to guide growth around the future transit center, which located at the intersection of Rainier and Grady. Our vision for the area is informed by our community stakeholders, staff, our agency partners, uh, the work of our consultants, but it is for a mixed use uh, commercial and residential district, which is oriented around transit. Um, so it, as I mentioned, it's not been even a full year since the plan was adopted, but implementation is already really well underway. Um, we've expanded the city's multifamily tax exemption program to help incentivize housing around the transit area and with support from the department of commerce uh, we've also begun working on a planned action ordinance and environmental impact statement which will help spur development in the area so a similar strategy that we've seen with the sunset community uh, presenting the award this evening uh, from the department of commerce is Catherine mccoy all righty, thank you. Good evening, council members and mayor, honorable mayor. Again, as I am, uh, <laughs> as uh, Katie mentioned, I'm Catherine McCoy. I'm with the Department of Commerce. I'm also the city's regional planner with the Department of Commerce. I'm honored to be here. On behalf of Governor Jay Inslee and Commerce Director Lisa Brown, I'm pleased to present the Smart Communities Vision Award to the city of Renton. 
This award highlights the governor's commitment to preserving and protecting Washington's desirable quality of life and recognizes the hard work of our communities, residents, and local officials to make sure we have a clean environment, equitable access to amenities and high quality affordable communities, all of the attributes that make our great state a wonderful place to live, work, and play. This specific award highlights progress for the entire state by moving the needle on multimodal connectivity, high quality compact commercial and residential uses and living, thriving neighborhoods, which are priorities of the governor and core objectives for the Department of Commerce. Today, we are celebrating a collaborative and thorough effort to implement goals, policies, and plans to encourage non-motorized transportation, connections to natural systems, affordable housing, and a sense of place in the Rainier Grady sub-area for current and future Renton residents. The Rainier Grady Junction Transit-Oriented Development Sub-Area Plan and Future Outcomes like the land use and zoning updates and infrastructure investments will continue to serve the community and region for decades to come. We are encouraged by the high standards set by the project. The implementation plan provides a clear, open, and transparent process for public identification and prioritization that will lead to comprehensive and sustainable projects that are consistent with the city's economic development and transportation plans and the state's growth management act. Also noteworthy, were the excellent public outreach efforts associated with this project, including the work sessions, the 100% online public meetings, accessible web page, and the strong partnerships with public and private stakeholders as evidenced by the broad list of stakeholders in the work group and developers forum, as well as your consultant teams. To the city of Renton, council, mayor, council members, Mayor Pavone, thank you for your commitment to strengthening Washington State communities and a special thank you to the city staff that shepherded this project through providing technical assistance and dedication to consistency with the Growth Management Act. On behalf of Governor Inslee, I thank you for your hard work, innovation, and amazing model for planning the future growth development and redevelopment of our communities. Thank you. Again? <laughs> we have another oh, yeah. I think there's another photo. Oh, photos. Yeah, because more, more than city more people. Yeah. Okay. We Oh, well, that's not a problem. Well, that's not a problem. Okay. For you. I mean, I think in general. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, I definitely want to give a big shout out to our staff um, for both these awards. They just do an amazing job. And uh, the ADU's um, program uh, was an amazing pivot. I remember when I was first on council, we were talking about the ADU uh, program and we were concerned there was going to be uh, too many of them in the city. So we were regulating them and it sure did come a long way. And, and with the planning commission's involvement, um, it's turned into obviously an amazing um, program. So I want to thank you all that were involved and thank all the hard work of the planning commission also. So thank you very much. Next up, we have the administrative report. All right, good evening, everyone. The next pop-up lunch will be held Tuesday, November 15th from 12 to 1.30 p.m. at 300 Rainier Avenue North. Ready to eat lunch and drinks from Amazon Fresh, personal hygiene kits, cleaning supplies, and socks will be available to those with food insecurities and or are unsheltered. The last pop-up lunch of the year will take place at the same location on November 29th. The pop-up lunch events will be suspended for the month of December. The pop-up lunch events are sponsored by the Equity Housing and Human Services Department and the Emergency Feeding Program. Retton Technical College will be hosting an open house and tours program showcase on Tuesday, November 15th from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. Visit interactive program tables, talk to faculty, learn about career training and transfer options. This event is free and open to the community. For more information or to RSVP, contact outreach at rtc.edu or call 425-235-6353. Information about preventative street maintenance, traffic impact projects, road closures, and I-405 work happening this week can be found at retinwa.gov forward slash traffic. All projects are weather permitting unless otherwise noted. Streets will always remain open. Okay. Thank you. Next up is audience comment. We do have one person signed up to speak tonight. When I call your name, please up to the podium you have three minutes to speak please give your name city of residence and topic you're going to discuss i feel silly saying that to you but <laughs> good evening i'm diane dobson i'm here tonight on behalf of the north rent and neighborhood association the north rent neighborhood association leadership does not have the ability to attend tonight's meeting and have asked as members of the renton chamber that i convey the following messaging the North Renton Neighborhood Association leadership has questions regarding the asphalt plant proposed upstream from a Renton community and headed to court at the end of this month. The Neighborhood Association has concerns relating to the potential impacts on the environment for the plant itself, additional truck traffic that will occur as a result of the plant location on our already congested Maple Valley Highway, any potential accident or plant disaster not limited to fire, spill, leakage, or other somewhat controllable circumstances, and most specifically, potential devastation from uncontrollable natural disasters, such as flooding, as this plant is being proposed just 150 feet from the banks of our Cedar River. The association leadership also echoes challenge brought forward by others, including the Duwamish and Muckleshoot tribes, as how this project is moved forward without environmental impact study, with determination of non-significance as a project of industrial nature in this riverside location. We in Renton have been stewards of this river for decades, including not having overhead lighting, which would have increased our neighborhood safety due to the detriment of spawning fry of many endangered fish and the same Cedar River that serves as a contributing source for the drinking water for over 1.4 million people in our region. It was brought to the attention of community leaders at a recent FEMA emergency training that this location is in potential floodplain and should a disaster which caused flooding occur and water levels raised to the point of flooding downstream in our community, the results could be more than disastrous. In addition to the flooding displacement of our downtown Renton, our economic hub and heartbeat of our community, the neighborhoods of North and South Renton could be flooded as well. As we saw with locations during Hurricane Katrina when the levees broke, flooding on its own is catastrophic, but flooding with the toxins carried from an asphalt plant placed next to our river could be absolutely devastating to the residential neighborhoods that exist in North and South Renton. Neighborhoods which are incredibly diverse with senior populations and a large number of low income and vulnerable residents. The Neighborhood Association would like to know, does the city have a formal position on this asphalt plant? If so, what? The neighborhood would like a copy of any position presented to the county and an awareness of any resources ex expended to support the stance. If the city has not taken a stance on the asphalt plant, why not? Especially with the protective approach our city has taken in other environmental areas, including the Climate Commitment Act, as well as moving Stoneway from the Riverside location years ago. 
If no stance has been taken, the Neighborhood Association would like the city to take a position, preferably in opposition, and send it to King County. While citizens with a nonprofit organization, also a member of the chamber, Citizens to Stop 169 Asphalt Plant, have done an incredible job in raising funds, awareness, and facilitating legal approach, including the current appeal process. The Neighborhood Association is of the belief the city of Renton, as the downstream neighbor set to receive the largest impact from the project, should be using their resources and platform to protect our community, protect our residents, and protect future generations to come from this project. While the Neighborhood Association is aware the ultimate decision lies with King County, they are asking the City of Renton to join in in opposition to the location for this proposed plan. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor, if may I? Yes. I'm, I, I feel like Randy right now. <laughs> uh, Diane, if you can provide us uh, with the email for the North Renton or Neighborhood Association of the current presidency or whatever, I think we will be more than happy yep. to send you all the material that we have. Sure. Oh, great. Oh, great. Thank <laughs> you. Mr. Thank Mr. You. Mayor, if I may, I think also a committee of the whole, we as a council took a stance and we might be a little neglectful on writing up the statement, Council Member, Council President McIrvin from the Council oh. Committee of the Whole we discussed a few months ago around this asphalt plant issue. Yeah. It was a letter that was uh, approved, yes. Yeah, we, were, we did approve the, the council writing a letter um, in opposition. And the city did actually send the council separate letters um, um, stating our position uh, against the use of that that location for um, an asphalt facility, so. May I? Yes. Um, also, uh, on our newsletter, it, it was in the in the Renton, our Renton, it yeah. was published as well. Yeah, it's been Our published. Position yes. On social media. But we're happy to follow up um, with an email on our formal position. Okay. All right, thank you. Next up is the consent agenda. Uh, there are 14 items for council consideration. Are there any that would like to be removed for separate consideration? Mr. Mayor. Yes. I would like to uh, remove uh, item M or pull item M. Okay. And if there are no other council members wishing to uh, pull any items, I would remove. I would move approval of the consent agenda minus item M. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, second by Council Member Perez, that the consent agenda be approved minus item M. And um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. Item M, please. Yes, yes Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a very simple one. Uh, it, it, the Public Works Department is ready to purchase these two vehicles, but sadly, a cash offer beat them to it. So uh, they are no longer available. So there is no longer a need to prove this, approve this item. So um, we would uh, hopefully have this item back at a later date when uh, new vehicles have been identified. All right. Thank you. That's all. We don't need to make any. Do we need? Is there anything else we have to do with that, Jason? We have to refer do anything with that? I don't believe so. Okay. All right. That's done then. We're going to move on to unfinished business. Council President McGurvin. Yes. yes, Mr. Mayor. The Committee of the Whole has one report to present. Okay. Hey, committee of the Whole committee report. This is regarding the 2023-2024 biennial budget. The Committee of the Whole concurs with the Mayor's 2023-2024 proposed budget and supports conducting first reading of a budget ordinance at, at the November 7, 2022 Council meeting, consistent with the budget proposed by the Mayor with the following changes. Property tax levy uh, set the 2023 property tax levy using the preliminary property tax worksheet provided by King County showing estimated property taxes of $25,285,929. This amount includes increasing the 2022 levy by 7.44% through the use of the city's annual 1% allowed increase and the use of banked taxing capacity plus increasing increases attributable to new construction, annexation, relevying funds, and levy errors. Uh, two, the 2023-2024 fee schedule. Adopt the 2023-2024 fee schedule as presented in Section 7, Appendix of the Proposed Budget, pages 7 through 19 through 7, uh, or 7-19 through 7-35, including the adjustments from the current approved fee schedule as identified uh, in red therein, and a further adjustment to footnotes that clarify accessory dwelling unit ADU permit fees are not waived, but instead established at the existing specified amounts of zero dollars or 50 percent 
uh, and three, 2023 index of positions and pay ranges authorized the non-represented and represented employees positions and pay ranges for 2023 as identified in the proposed 2023 index of positions and pay ranges located in section seven appendix of the proposed budget pages 7-7 through 7-18 with amendments to the non-commissioned employee schedule as approved previously by council on October 17, 2022 and the supplemental employee wage table adjusted by state minimum wage limits. Mr. Mayor. Mr. McGurvin. Uh, I would, so I, I know I need, need to still need to sign this report, but upon, uh, assuming there's no um, objection to me signing the report uh, from any council members, we've all discussed the budget quite thoroughly, and I will uh, move approval of uh, committee the whole report. Michael. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, second by Council Member Perez, that the council approve the committee the whole report. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. And we are on to Council Member O'Halloran. Yes. The unfinished business. Oh, I'm sorry. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Council Member Rivera. Uh, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor, but I would like to take a moment to plug that we do have several vacancies on the Human Services Commission, Equity Commission, and Park Commission for anyone who's interested. Hey, Council Member Alberson. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the Utilities Committee has one committee report. Yeah, this Utilities Committee committee report is regarding 2023 and 2024 utility revenue requirements, uh, capital improvement program, and fees. The Utilities Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the proposed 2023 and 2024 revenue increases of 0% each year for the water utility, 3% each year for the wastewater utility, and 40% each year for the surface water utility. Uh, approve the deferral of the King County rate stabilization charge for 2023 and 2024 per wastewater account. Adopt the 2023 King County wastewater treatment charge of $52.11 that has been approved by the King County Council. Approve the proposed 2023 and 2024 water, wastewater, and surface water utility system development charges. And approve the proposed Skyway wholesale water rate increase of 2.5% in 2023 and 2.5% in 2024. Uh, the committee further recommends that an ordinance be prepared to amend Chapter 2, Storm and Surface Water, Chapter 4, Water, and Chapter 5, Sewer of Title 8, Health and Sanitation of the Renton Municipal Code, and be, and be presented for first reading. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Alberson. I move the council concur with the Utilities Committee committee report. Second. It's been moved by Councilmember Alberson, second by Councilmember Rivera, that the council concur with the Utility Committee report. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. Council Member Van. And no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. All right, we're on to legislation, and we have five ordinances for first reading. Okay, the first ordinance is regarding a docket item, docket 220, uh, flood regulations. This was recommended for adoption by the PMD Committee on September 26, uh, 2022. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending flood regulations in subsections 4350G4D and 4350G4E of the Rent Municipal Code, authorizing corrections and providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, yeah, Councilmember Robertson. I move the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, it's been moved by uh, Councilmember Alberson, second by Councilmember Perez, that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the next ordinance is regarding the 2023-2024 piped utility rates, which was just approved by the uh, Utilities Committee Committee Report. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending subsection 822G, section 823, subsection 8424A, sections 8431 and 8515 of the Renton Municipal Code, establishing piped utility rates for 2023 and 2024, authorizing corrections, providing for severability, and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Robertson. I move the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, it's been moved by... Councilmember Albertson, seconded by Councilmember Perez, that the um, 
Ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, motion carries. At the next three ordinances are regarding uh, uh, property tax and budget, and they were just approved by the committee of the whole report. An ordinance of the city of Renton, or the first one, sorry, is about property tax increase. An ordinance of the city of Renton, Washington, authorizing the dollar amount and percentage increase for the property tax to be levied for the 2020 uh, year 2023, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes Council Member McGurvin. I move that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Perez, that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion hey. carries. Sorry, the next one is establishing the property tax levy for 2023. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, establishing the property tax levy for the year 2023 for general city operational purposes in the amount of $25,285,929, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. President McGurvin. I move that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Perez, that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right, the final ordinance is for uh, uh, regarding adopting the uh, next biennial budget. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, adopting the biennial budget for the years 2023-2024, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council President McGurvin. I move that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Okay, okay it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, second by Council Member Perez, that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We are on to new business, Council President McGurvin. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, a uh, couple meetings to announce. Uh, first, I would like to uh, announce that the Committee of the Whole will be meeting at 5.45 p.m. on Monday, November 14th. Uh, here in Chambers and via video conference, there are two items on the agenda. Uh, one, Enti Environmental Science Center slash Liberty Park Building Activation Update, and second, Clean Economy uh, Strategy 2.0 Update. Uh, then we'll have our um, regular council meeting at 7 p.m. here in Chambers and via video conference. Uh, finally, I would like to announce um, we've worked over uh, for the original Retin Original Fire Authority. We have three council seats on there. Um, we, as we agreed to previously, uh, we would have one member ter terming off, so we didn't have the thing we had last time where all of a sudden there's three brand new council members. Um, so uh, we welcomed Council Member O'Halloran to the, the, the board last year, and so um, it will be time for one of us to depart, and Council Member Perez and I have worked it out, and uh, I have agreed to uh, step aside and uh, let her continue on on the uh, RFA committee, and so uh, we will need to open it up to uh, replace my seat um, on that um, on, on the RFA board to have a, another council member there. So um, with that, if, if I can, I would like to uh, uh, move that we open nominations uh, for that seat at uh, this time. Um, and if we can't reach some sort of consensus tonight or agreement, um, we do need to fill that before the end of the year. So I, at very least when we go around, people, folks can state their, their interest, but I, I will move that we open nominations. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Council President McGurvin, seconded by Council Member Perez, that we open nomination for the um, seat one. That shall be a three year term starting January 1st, 2023 through December 31st, 2025. Uh, then January 1st, 2020. No, no that's it. Let's stop. <laughs> Too much there. <laughs> Kept reading. Um, all right, so the nominations are open. Oh, did I? We, we, didn't, we didn't. We didn't finish the vote. Okay. Vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <laughs> okay. Now we're open. I will accept <laughs> nominations. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council. I nominate uh, Council Member James Alperson. Okay. So James is Albertson's um, has been nominated. Are there any other <laughs> nominations on the floor at this time? Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Yes. Council I will Mayor nominate Council Member Vaughn. Councilmember Vaughn. Are there any other nominations on the floor at this time? Okay, then I will call for the vote, Jason. 
Are we doing a ballot vote? Um, n no, um, a name vote. So you call each a, a roll call. That's what I meant. Roll, roll call, call, yeah. Yes. So Council President McIrvin. Gone. Uh, Council Member O'Halloran. Halverson. Council Member Rivera. Halverson. Council Member Alberson. Alberson. <laughs> Council Member Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn. But uh, if I may, uh, thank you so much, uh, Council President, for your nomination. And I'm very enthusiastic to, to hear and to know that Council Member Alberson um, is also uh, wanting to serve. Um, so I would actually would like to withdraw. If, um, not accept your nomination, if that's okay. Oh, I wish you would have said that first. <laughs> oh, I don't know what the process was. You have to finish the vote. No, you need to go. You can vote for Jane. Council Member Alberson. Okay. Okay. And uh, Council Member Perez. Alberson. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Council I would like to change my vote to Alberson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a unanimous vote uh, for our newest. Um, uh, board for the RFA, Councilman Robertson. Congratulations. Yes, Councilman Press. If may I, I would like to say a couple of words uh, to thank uh, deeply con uh, President McCurbin for his service on the RFA. Um, as you may know, the RFA has been an organization that has required a lot of work from this body to be able to provide the services that are necessary um, to for our community to be safety safe. You and I, we were on this dais, I think you and I were the only ones that were in this dais, or you were the last vote when we had a fire department. Uh, but no, when we voted before you were elected. Yeah. So we know the process that we went through, and you specifically sat for the two years previous to for the RFA. The RFA requires a serious compromise from council members to serve. It's time, but also is the ability to work as a team, collaborative, and in a very respectful manner. It's an, a great team to work. I gotta give kudos to our other board directors, which are amazing to work with. And uh, and for me, it has been a privilege to serve with council member uh, Ryan McIrvin. He has served as vice chair this past year and as a chair of finances, and he has shined. Um, our priority has always been the providing services to our community and to have a sustainable, uh, financial sustainable organization. So thank you very much, uh, President McIrvin, for your service. Thank you. All right. Well, yes, it's an extremely um, important organization. I was on the, on the board that actually formed the organization a few years back and um, it's a huge commitment, even though it's a separate governing body now, it still requires um, the council's input and oversight. So I want to thank you all for taking the time and, and serving on it. It's, um, it's no small feat to, um, um, you know, make sure that the interests of the residents are being looked after. So thank you very much, Council Member Alberson. Okay. And then we are, you are done with, uh, I think that's all I have. That's all you have. Okay. Other, other than to echo council Mayor Perez's sentiments on the RFA. So, and that, that obviously, uh, while I didn't have the opportunity to chair, I would certainly say, um, I, it was an easy decision for me to, to, um, to, you know, rather than to make it a coin flip or something to allow you to continue on because your passion is very clearly there. Uh, and um, you were a great chair for the organization, and I'm sure the, the, the next chair, who I suspect is also sitting up on this dais, uh, will, will do a great job as well. Full faith and confidence in them. So. Thank you. Councilmember O'Halloran. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to announce that on Monday, November 14th at 4.30 p.m., the Finance Committee will be meeting at the uh, Council Conference Room and also by video conference. Please bear with me. We have 11 items on the agenda. The first is the agreement with the Washington State Department of Commerce for early implementation of our climate planning grant. The second is the approval of Kaiser Permanente healthcare contracts for 2023. The third is the renewal of the healthcare management administrator contract for 2023. Fourth, language translation for Ask Me Memorandum of Understanding, that's our city employees union. 
The fifth is utility leak utility bill leak adjustment request for the HICI Investment LLC. Six, the utility bill leak adjustment request for Linda Birch. Seventh, written middle housing project grant acceptance. Eight, amendment two to CAG-19-342 with Ogden Murphy Wallace PLLC. The ninth is the amendment to the Renton Municipal Code Chapter 3-4-3 for bad debt write-off. Tenth, as always, is vouchers. And 11th, we actually have emerging issues in finance as well. So thank you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. That is all. All right. That's a full list there. Okay. Next up is Council Member Rivera. No new bit. Mayor. Okay. Council Member Albertson. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. The Planning and Development Committee um, would like to announce uh, we'll be meeting on Monday, November 14th at 3.45 p.m. in the Council Conference Room and via video conference. Three items on the agenda. A South King County Housing and Homelessness Partners 2023 Work Plan and Operating Budget. Uh, number two, Adoption of 2018 International Fire Codes. And number three, emerge, Emerging Issues in CED. That's all, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you, uh, Council Member Van. Uh, no new business, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Council Member Perez. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Okay. okay. I don't know how we're going to do with this without him. What's the <laughs> wish of the council? Good <laughs> turn. <laughs> it's been moved by uh, Council Member Rivera and seconded by Council President McGurvin that we adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right. We